Okay, good morning. Um, I've got another project here. Actually, I, I just started this and I decided that I would go ahead and film it because it might be something useful that y'all would uh, possibly do. Uh, a little disclaimer here, this is not something that I usually do. Typically, I will make the pattern from a boat and not, not do a pattern off of old canvas like this. It's a lot easier, it's a lot more time conserving. Um, and it comes out better if you're actually patterning from the boat versus taking a pattern from an old piece of canvas like this. But the, uh, the boat that this cover goes to is up in Chicago. It happens to be my girlfriend's father's boat. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for him and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Um, what this is is a cockpit cover that goes, it's on a, uh, I think it's a 38 foot fountain and the cockpit cover goes over the top of the windshield and it snaps down at the base of the windshield and it comes up and over. Now I've already cut this out but I'm going to show you what I've done. Um, we'll get a better angle here and I'll show you basically all I've done was cut it out at this point but I'll show you where my cuts were and uh, show you how you can get this thing so that you can make the, the rough cloth fabric to do the pattern off of this old canvas. Um, to get it pretty much exact, you know, so we've got to also mark these snaps in, and I'm going to install the snaps and then send it up to them and hope it fits. And that's the, that's the whole key with patterning off of old canvases, hoping it fits because you, you don't know if, if this thing is shrunk or if it's stretched or what. So I'm just going to do the best that I can do and, and hope that it's and hope that it's right. Um, if this was actually pay work from a customer that I didn't know, I would turn this job down. I wouldn't do it um, because the variables are just too, too pronounced as far as what the, where the snaps go and how, how much canvas is, you know, with Sunbrella, you've got shrinkage and you've got stretch. You know, with, uh, when water puddles on a piece of canvas, it will actually stretch out the center of it and then over time, the sides will shrink. So trying to pull a perfect pattern off of old canvas is, is next to impossible. But this canvas is actually in relatively decent shape, so I'm going to give it a try and we'll see how the thing fits. Maybe I can get him to take a picture of it once he gets it and gets it on the boat and see how it goes and let you know. Um, so I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to get a, a different angle over here so that you guys can see what, what I've done and where I've cut this thing out. And then we'll get into doing the pattern. Okay, here we go. Um, this is the front of the cover. And this piece right here is what came over the top of the windshield. And what I've done, there's a center seam here that connects these two pieces. What I've done was I made sure that I scribed on this piece of canvas a line. And before I cut this out, if you can see this, I put reference marks, lines through this thing, before I cut it out, okay? They go all the way down. Now, this is a zipper that wrapped around the bimini top right here. So I just unzipped the zipper, and right at this seam, which is at the top of the windshield, I didn't take a seam ripper or a razor knife or anything like that. I just simply cut it out with my scissors, and I'll add my own seam allowance to these edges. Rather than trying to pick all this stuff apart, it's just senseless to do that. You can just cut it off and know that you're going to add the seam allowance you know, to, make, to make the thing fit right. But the trick here is really these reference marks, okay? Um, you have to put these things in here so that when I start sewing this back together, I know because I'll transfer these marks onto the new canvas. So I'll make sure that I can line these marks up as I'm sewing them to get the whole thing back straight. Um, so this was, the, this was the front piece that I just cut off and we'll discard for a second. Now, the only the only dart, the only darts on this particular cover were the two back corners. There aren't any in the sides because of the way that it was made. So there again, you just take your shears on the dart. See, this actually went together here, and it was sewn, sewn. I'm not picking anything apart. I just cut right through the binding and everything, and I just cut a straight line right through that dart so I can get this thing to lay out flat. There again, or now once again, when I mark this, I need to make certain that I remember to put the seam allowance back into this, okay? Because you're not, you're not cutting the stitching apart and letting it lay where the canvas was before. 
So that's the trick with just cutting, is to make sure that you remember to add the seam allowance back in it. Otherwise it won't fit. Um, now this is a, uh, a, obviously a cleat in the back that, that will be cut out. I'm gonna duplicate this as well, but we don't need to do anything with that. We'll just lay it flat, and then I'll just put a couple of hash marks in here and, and identify where the cut goes on the new canvas. So, let me lay this out and we'll get the, uh, oh, let me, now the next thing I need to do, <clears throat> I may sound a little bit dumb doing this thing, because I don't do it every day. This is something that um, doesn't happen very often. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stretch this thing over the table. Um, luckily, my table's big enough that I can do this. If not, you can do it on the floor, garage floor, wherever you've got, just to lay it out. Knowing that my fabric is 60 inches wide, um, you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a seam that goes right here. There's just a little piece of canvas, and then I think they use 46-inch fabric on this cover. It doesn't make any difference. What I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this thing out, and then I'm going to measure for 60-inch fabric. And then we'll get the rough cloth measurements so that we can sew it together. And then I'll show you a really nice way of transferring the pattern to the canvas without having to lay the whole cover all the way out. You can do it with the, when, it, when you're rolling it up, uh, but I'll show you that. So let me get this thing laid out and then I'll show you what we're gonna measure out. All right, now with the, uh, with the cover laid out, what, I, what I've done is I just put, that being the back, the front of the boat, I just put my measure tape up here and I drew a mark at 60 inches and then here's another mark at 60 inches and then I came up here to the front and I put another mark and that's about 60 inches right there so there's no there's no standard as far as <clears throat> making the rough off you can put a short seam in the back or in the front uh, keep in mind that every piece that you do is going to be different so don't don't try to use what I say as rule you know it's just a general you know so all we're doing is getting enough of a measurement to put the cloth together so that we have enough fabric that this will cover. So at this first mark, that's about eight and a half foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my first piece at nine foot, all right? Then I'm going to come up, and here's what, on the second piece of fabric, even on the first piece of fabric, you have to keep in mind that you're going to measure the width of the widest point, all right? From here back is that one piece of fabric. So at the widest point, that's where you're going to do your measurement. So when you come over here, I don't know if you can tell or notice, but this canvas comes down to a point both ways. Well, this is, even though it's right in the center of this piece, that's the widest point. So I'm going to measure that from beam to beam. And that's actually nine foot. So I'm going to cut my piece nine foot six. So I've got a nine foot piece, a nine foot six piece, and then here's my other mark, my next seam, which is going to come right through this part, which you know is the widest point once again, and that's about eight foot nine inches. So I'll make that nine foot. So I got a nine foot, a nine foot six piece, and another nine foot. Now. At the front here, this was this was the, the the last mark, or 15 feet from the back, three pieces. I've got to have another short little piece that's going to get stitched on to make the front of that. This happens to be six foot. So there again, you know, typically a good rule of thumb is to give yourself three inches on each side. So add six inches. If you're not comfortable, you haven't been doing it a lot, add a foot. You know, fabric's cheap compared to screw, you know, screwing it up. So um, I'll make this a six foot six little piece. You know, that's approximately 12 inches, 14 inches. So I'll make it, you know, 18 inches to, to make sure that I've got enough to lay out. So now knowing that, let me review. We got a nine foot, a nine foot six, a nine foot, and then a six and a half foot, 12 inch, 18 inch piece on the front of that. Um, I'm going to get rid of the canvas right now. We'll roll out the, the uh, new canvas 
and sew that rough cloth together. All right, so here's what we've got. Um, I've got a nine foot piece, a nine and a half foot piece, and my other nine foot piece. And I'll show you in a second that I've got the, the little six and a half foot piece cut out too. Matter of fact, it came out, it was almost seven foot that I cut that piece. Um, so let's just get started. Now, some people will say that the way that you stitch a seam, you know, for water to flow down a cover is important. It is important if you can, if you can do it without, you know, a big problem. But I would say, don't worry about which direction the seam is going so much as making the, the, the canvas fit is, I don't even know if that made sense, but it's, it's true. A lot of people, even on bimini tops, they're worried about which way the seams are going all the time. It's not that big of a deal, I'm telling you. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna eyeball and make sure that I get this shorter piece centered up on the, on the nine and a half foot piece. All right, now that you've got that, all your pieces sewn together, um, what we're going to do is kind of sew this a little bit backwards. We're going to roll this back, and I'm going to start at the back of the canvas. I'll show you why. This takes a little bit of manipulating, all right? So bear with me. I'm going to shut the camera on and off just so I can get this lined up, but you'll get the gist of how it's going to go. I'm going to put the, the canvas, the old canvas, on the, the back, lined up here, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll do it with marks as we roll the cover forward, okay? Um, and even if you don't have a big space, it's, it's, it still works because I'm going to, I'm going to pin it down, and then I'll put, a, I'll put a mark, and then I'll slide it back. I can roll it out further, 
and use that same mark that I just laid in and put it put another mark, okay? I'll show you. If I can figure out how this thing goes. Alright, here we go. Here's, there again, like I said earlier, I don't do this every day, so one thing I just remembered or realized is we got to find a center of this thing, doing it this way, and get it laid up so that the pieces are running parallel to each other so that it's, you know, you're not, you know, pulling it off the canvas, basically. So... 108, 54 is the center, all right? And then let's do that same thing with our the cover, roughly. We got 101, so 50 and a half, that's about right there. So, <clears throat> Uh, I think I go through this with all the videos. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to pin this to the table like I do. My table has a piece of three eighths inch foam or felt that's in there, so that I can take my stick pins and I can actually stick right to the table and, and pull my patterns out. Um, you can do it with clamps. You can do it with. You can do it with pins, just like they do with making uh, clothing and stick it through the canvas and weave it on and hold it in there. The objective here is just to get the thing pinned down so that it's nice and flat and laid out. So I fortunately have the ability to just pin right to the tape. I know you couldn't see that over there, um, but what I did is I just grabbed a seam. So I pinned it at the seam, and then I pulled that other seam out and, and pinned it down. So now let me go to the other side of the table, and I'll roll this canvas out as far as I can, and we'll get it laid out as flat as possible here. Um, this is kind of hard to do by yourself. I, mean, I have to do the camera and do all this stuff at one time. So you're not going to see every single thing that I do. Um, but you'll get the gist of it. I mean, see how nice and, nice and flat that is? I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but it's, it's, it's close enough. It really is. Um, I'm going to show you how to mark this out, and then I'll show you how to... We won't do the other side because you can't see it. Um, then I'll show you how to roll it out forward and we'll start marking it. So one thing that I've learned throughout the years and years and years of doing this, you never really need a consistent line to, to scribe. All you need is hash marks. See so what I'll do is I'm just going to come through here and I'm going to put little hash marks. You can see that. Um, it's, and then when you cut this out, you know, you can use your judgment with your scissors as far as cutting it out, to just cut it straight. You know, you don't, you don't necessarily have to follow 
every single little curve that's in this thing, not to mention the fact that it's stretched out and it's shrunk and blah, blah, blah. Um, so basically just put your, put little hash marks where you're going. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier. So like I was telling you before, we're going to also identify the snaps. Make yourself a, don't want to say a pattern, but develop a system for yourself. You know, snaps around. You know, you don't put a circle around it. You know, whatever your marks are. So when you get this canvas off of here, you know exactly what every one of your marks are for. You know, like on darts, I'll identify the tips of the darts and the bottom of the darts and which way I want the darts to fold over. Everything's done with a mark. You know, so that when you get it to the table, after being on the boat or from a pattern, you know exactly what you're doing, all right? So these little round marks are going to be my snaps. I know that that's pretty basic and simple to say it, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't really realize that it's, that it's that critical. If you put a line for everything, you get it to the table, you'll be confused in a second. So, all right, there's my snap there, my snap there. Now, once again, here's the dart, all right? I'm going to mark the top of the dart, and then I'm going to mark the bottom of the dart. All right, and then I'm gonna mark the bottom of the canvas. Let me get a close up of this. <clears throat> Say that again. I'm marking the top of this dart, then I'm coming down here, I'm gonna mark the, the bottom of this cut, the bottom of this cut, and then I mark the bottom of both pieces of canvas, okay? Now what I need to do is I need to realize, see, I can see from the stitch line on the old canvas that this piece overlapped this piece. So I'll come over here and I'll put a little bitty line on there. And that will tell me that I want to grab this and put it on top of that. Believe me, it will make a big difference, okay? When darts are at an angle, um, if you have a dart built at an angle this way and then you fold it the wrong way, the overlapping won't line up. This piece will actually come up or come down if you fold it the wrong way. Because it is weird, but the distance from the top to the bottom are different depending on which way you fold the thing. So just make sure that you get it all lined up. Now when I go to cut this thing, actually I'm not going to cut it. You, some people will actually cut, they'll actually cut this dart out and then try to sew it together. I won't. I'm going to leave it just like it is and I'm going to fold this over and just put one stitch line right through the top of it. And then I'll cut the excess at the bottom off after I've stitched this together. So knowing that, now I'm going to come in, I'm going to put identification marks for this uh, cleat that gets cut out here. I got my pen in the way. But typically, see now here's what I'm talking about. I've got a line there and I've got a line there, right? Well, if I get this to the table or somebody else was sewing this together, they wouldn't know necessarily, well, what that, you know, what's that mark right there? So if I put a T in or even box it off like that, identify that this is going to be my, you can even do, do something like that to know that you're going to cut it, but, but mark it out so that you know exactly what it is. So now anybody that knows some of this canvas stuff, they're going to know that that's going to be a cleat cut out and that will be a dart right there by the, by that identification marks on there. So now come back and I'm going to mark. Make sure you mark your snaps. Go to the other side. Okay. Come here. There's another snap. Can't... All right. Here's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a line right through that. This is my zipper where the bimini top gets notched out. Circle that, put a line through the center of it, and then I'm going to come up here to my pen and I'm going to mark 
a line through the old canvas and through the new canvas, okay? If you have to, write it down just so that you know that that's the end of this. So now I can move this whole thing forward and line these two marks up, pull it back, and start scribing again. Okay, now here's what I've done. I just, I just took this and I rolled it up with the canvas, both pieces, and then I came back and I lined up my marks on both, you know, where I put my marks from the canvas to the new canvas, the old canvas, and, um, and I stretched it all out again. Now I'm going to come through and I'm just going to mark the rest of the outside about through the center of it. Um, if you notice, there's a big wad of canvas right here. That's been stretched out by a tent pole. And I've got to mark in here where the, the tent pole goes so I can put another one in it. There's two of them that go in this cover. Um, so just go through, mark your snaps, mark your cutoffs, and be careful, you know, as careful as you can to get it as accurate as you can. And then we'll, uh, we'll roll this up further and we'll finish off on the front of it. Now, here, I've got to start transferring these marks. If you remember, we put these, these hash marks on the canvas where the two pieces get sewn together. So I need to remember to start transferring these hash marks onto the new canvas, all right? Put another mark, I'm going to put another mark right here just because that way I, I know where to line up on the other side. Here's the other tent pole. I'll mark that. Mark the center where the center seam goes. Any mark that you have on the old canvas, you need to transfer to the new canvas. That's it. Okay, so all I did was just take the old canvas off of it, and um, now you can you can see all the marks that are on here. Now keep in mind, remember what I said that this 
these marks up here around this front windshield, I've got to cut some seam allowance in this, all right? Uh, so I'll just start off with that. This was the bimini top, and that was the edge of the zipper that went right there. And then this is where the, the canvas starts. So I'm just going to we'll cut off straight on there. If you're, not, if you're not comfortable with this stuff, with, with cutting straight lines yet, if you're, if you're new to doing this stuff, you know, it, it's okay to get a, a ruler you know, and start drawing straight lines and draw this all out after you've got it marked out you know, to make sure that you're cutting straight. But um, for the most part, you can just eyeball this thing and get pretty, pretty close with it. My back's going to be to you a little bit because I'm right-handed, but I'm just going to I'm just going to cut the front windshield of this out. See that? I just left about three eighths to a half inch, whatever your heart desires, with the seam allowance. Um, but I just cut the seam allowance right out of it. Oh, you see that? Yeah, all right. Here's one thing I like to do. Um, I forgot to even say, I don't put a cutoff mark. Wherever there's gonna be two pieces that are coming together, I'll let the canvas dictate where it wants to go. So this is actually cut long. I'm, I'm guessing that the, the mark is probably somewhere in here. I'm going to leave this extra until I get that sewn on so that I can cut both of these two pieces off at the same time. And the way that you eliminate sewing that on before you get it cut off, just come to a snap or to another mark, cut up, and then start right there and cut the rest of the perimeter off and leave this extra on here. Um, there, you know, you can, you can mark it. Make sure that you're, make sure that you know what you're doing with it because if you, if you cut that up and then you start sewing this together and then you forget, you know, or somebody else is on here and you're like, well, why is that so long? Or, you know, just, you want to have it identified so that you know exactly where you're at with the cover. So just go ahead and finish cutting the thing off. This was our cleat, right? It's getting cut out. The top of our dart, the bottom of our dart. I didn't write this down either. I did on the other side, but I know that this folds to the outside. So that's the outside. When you cut this out now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna cut about to my mark and then cut excess fabric out and cut that around. Now here, so when I fold, so when I fold my dart over, I can cut that off and it's all even. You cut this out last, right? If you cut, if, if these two lines aren't exactly right and you fold it over, you'll get it to mix, mix match, and then you'll have, to, you'll have to shorten it up because you don't have any extra fabric in there. If you leave this tail and you sew it down, it doesn't really matter where it's at because then you can cut it off and, and it'll all be even.
Same thing over here. The same corner, I'm leaving some extra on there so that I can even them up. All right, that's the bulk of this piece. Let's get, let's move this out of the way and we'll do the front. Some extra fabric. And our front piece. You'll notice that there's a seam. There's a seam right here in the center of it. And then there's another seam right here. Well, if I was making this custom onto the boat, I would probably make that the way that way, simply because that's the way that the, the fabric with being 60 inches lays out. Seems that we're gonna pattern this. Um, I don't need to cut this out. I can scribe that whole wing all in one piece. So I can make just two separate pieces and, and sew them together in the center of it. Now take notice of this. Um, this is the top of the windshield right here. Well, you see all the rips in the canvas? Those are snaps. Obviously, you have some sort of an enclosure, something that snaps to the top of the windshield. Well, nobody put reinforcing underneath this thing. and. Uh, and it ripped all these holes out. Those holes have probably been there forever since this cover was made. So on the inside of the new piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out about a three inch piece of reinforcing and I'm going to sew that some heavy vinyl or something like that, some Naga hide, something in there to keep the snaps from, from rubbing through the new canvas. All right, so let's do this. Let's just take And cut right through that seam. Alright, you've got two different pieces. Now you don't have to identify top and bottom, left and right, because you're going to scribe it so that it's top up. Uh, let's see. Shit. I mean, shoot. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay. I, I obviously am going to be like a, a monkey having his way with a football over here, so... I'm going to shut this camera off, and then once I get this laid up, I'll turn back on. Okay, after about 10 minutes of uh, playing with this, here's what I finally got. Um, the black is too small to get both of these out of there, so what I wound up doing was taking that piece over there and actually flipping it over. So, and I just said in that last little segment, that you don't have to worry which one is which, well now you do. You have to, you have to remember that that one got flipped over and all your marks that you're going to mark for your snap line have to be transferred you know, back to the, the outside of the canvas now. So um, now that it's laid out, um, I'm just going to go ahead and take my marker and scribe all this in, keeping in mind that up here where I cut the, the seam, and here where I cut the seam, I need seam allowance, okay? So um, this is a good spot where you could really mess the cover up if you don't remember to put that seam allowance in there. So scribe it all in, mark all of your snaps, and then <clears throat> on both where the zipper is, here, and there's another one over there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut the canvas long. I'm not going to worry about where, where that lines up exactly, all right? And I'll show you when we start sewing these together why that is. But what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll cut these two pieces out and I'm going to sew them together in the center. And then I'll start at the center and I'll start sewing this wing to the main part of the cockpit cover right in the center and work my way around both edges. 
And then if I cut the fabric long, then I can trim it off so that it's exactly in the right spot. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get these cut off. We're going to save you some time here. I'm going to get these cut off, and then uh, we'll start sewing this thing back together. All right, so here's the two pieces that are cut out. Uh, check this out. This was the one that was flipped over, right? Um, so what I did is I just took my marker and I transferred all of my snaps to the outside of the canvas and then also my little hash marks where I'm going to line the canvas up to both sides. So once I've got it flipped over now I, I can see that they're, they're right on me. Um, <coughs> I cut my seam allowance, I actually drew, that's uh, on the other side, but I drew a line from point to point and then I cut out seam allowance and then all my little hash marks that I put in there, I just eyeballed and cut that seam allowance out. So, good side to good side, I'm going to put these on top of each other. believer in showing exactly everything that's going on. What I just did there, when we pattern these two pieces, you're never going to get it exactly right. Never. I don't care who you are, how much time you spend. So what I did was I just got the best I could to mark the tops. And when I started sewing that together, I lined the top of this thing up and started sewing it. And I left this bottom. So I really left it. I cut it, I cut it close. But you can see how it doesn't line up. But it gives me, you can see the line right there where my cutoff line was. It gives me enough room so that I can trim that off straight. So you just come back with your scissors. And trim it off so it's all straight. Alright, all right, I'm going to pause for a second and get this lined up. Okay, <clears throat> top of the cover, I know, if you've never heard me say this before, it's just a good rule of thumb. Always remember that whenever you sew stuff together, it goes good side to good side, all right? You'll never put the bad side to a good side. So it's always good side to good side, or top to top. Here's our, here's our piece. We know that it's going to go right on there. Here's our center mark. Here's our center seam. I'm going to flip this over so that it's what's good side to good side, okay? Now I'm going to start sewing right there. And I'm going to sew this over that way. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to actually flip this whole thing over. I'm going to start in the same point and I'm going to sew around that side, okay? Now, and here's exactly when I start sewing, I'm going to start lining up my hash marks. I've got one here, and I've got one here. So that will be my first telltale of how I'm doing when I'm sewing over here if these two lines mark, you know, line up. Um, a lot of times I'm reluctant to say this, but you can, uh, you can fudge this stuff a little bit. It's not like doing upholstery vinyl where you've got a lot more stretch, but Sombrella will give a little bit. So you, if, you're, if you see that you're, if you see you're an inch off, you're going to do something wrong. But if you see that you're a quarter inch, 
you know, maybe even a half inch in a long span. Pinch where you want it to go, grab where you know it is, stretch it out, and sew it through. Um, if we were making new canvas and you were a new employee, and I, was, I would never, ever, ever, ever say that to you. Never. But you can fudge it a little bit, particularly with stuff like this where you're, you're just not going to get it that accurate because you're going off an old piece of canvas on there. So when I start sewing this, and I get to for here, here for example, and I come over and I start lining this up, and I see that this isn't completely on, I can, I can grab, I can pinch where these two pieces come together, where I want them, I can pinch where I'm at, and then I can pull this out, right? And then, and then run it through the sewing machine. Do it in little bitty bites, and you can actually fudge it, I guess you could say, fudge it. So, um, the reason why I'm even saying that is because when I'm putting the snaps on this thing, if I was to, if I was to start sewing and I'd go out a half inch, even to three quarters of an inch, and I put those snaps on there, they'll never snap on the boat, ever, 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 never. Because you're, I mean, you're, you're pulling your snap or moving your snap a half, three quarters, or an inch away. So in order to do this and have it done right, you have to stretch this out. Even if you wrinkle it up just a bit, I think that that might be a little bit better than it not fitting. So knowing that, this is another downside to, to doing patterns off of old canvas. Let's, let's go ahead and go sew it and see what happens. All right. Hopefully this is a good enough angle for you to see this. That's exactly what I want to show you how to do is hit the trunnel. off a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pull on this a little bit it's not something that you typically do but I'm gonna pull on it a little bit okay yeah it's off it's off um yeah it's off probably about three quarters of an inch so, I'm gonna flip. well, here's a good reason to notice there's no line or no cutoff over here. The end of this, this piece, this was the top, where the zipper goes, that's why I left it long, so that you can cut it off where it actually goes and, and not have to worry about fudging that part of it too, too much. But um, I think what I'll do, Come to a spot and just back tack that. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll have to come over here and figure out. Uh, you, can, you, can you see that right there? I guess that's about that's about a half of an inch. This this piece is further forward than the cover by about a half an inch. 
So we'll have to deal with that when we start putting the snaps on it. So now let's flip this thing over and go the other way and see. Because possibly the entire thing, if I'm a half inch the other way, going the, on the other side, and there again, I hate to say this too, but you can actually cut this apart, move it, and sew it back down again. Let's, let's see what it does. So I just flipped it over, come back to my center. it's good so come back and now we're going to top stitch top stitch that same seam not really sewn before. Um, whenever you're dealing with big stuff like this, which this isn't really that big, but um, the best advice I can tell you is the only thing that you're worried about is from here to here. Let the rest of the canvas do whatever it's going to go do. As long as you can line up what's right in front of you, keep on going. Until you get bound up and you can't control this little 12 inch area, then make an adjustment on your canvas. Um, I've seen so many people where you can you can literally take take a couple stitches and then start you know, rearranging and adjusting everything. Don't worry about it. Just just hold it down. So so what's right in front of you? See, it just got got to where my seam wasn't folded the right way. So now I can come over and make it make a change to it.
Okay, so here's what we got. Got that sewn back over here. Here's our edges. This was the piece that we cut off too long, uh, but we know that that angle was right right there. So we can just lay this out. Oh, I just pulled it. We can just lay this out best you can and mark it. Duplicate. And then from this cutoff, we know that we can come over here and cut that off. So you can cut, cut that piece off. Cut that piece off. And you've got it exactly where you want it. Just by leaving your extra fabric on there. It's that simple. If you try to make it uh, perfect, you'll never make it perfect. You just leave it and you can cut it off. Um, see my circle where the bimini was? So now I'm just going to take this. I can take this and just notch this out. I typically like to sew squares instead of circles. Just easier. But that's, that's how it goes. I'm going to go through now, and you don't need to see this because it's just brainless. I'm going to sew reinforcing on the snaps, and then I'm going to, uh, going to bind it, and then we'll put the tent poles in it, and then I'm going to put the snaps on it, and it's going to be done. So, All right, that's it. Um, I'm not going to show you the rest of it because it's just brainless. I'm going to reinforce and snap the bottom of it, bind it, you know, put those zippers in, and it'll be done. So, um, Good luck, and hope this helps you out. Listen, give me a call if you want to, if you need to talk about something, you need some help with something. Uh, write me, email me, my, all, you know, all my information is on there. So good luck, let me know.